The first time we are hearing directly from China after surprising reports that a suspected Chinese spy balloon is floating over the northern U.S. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson addressed the situation a short time ago, saying they're aware of the reports and we'll have more in a live report from Beijing in just a moment. But a senior U.S. defense official says the Pentagon is confident this surveillance balloon belongs to China. The U.S. has been tracking it for a few days and says it entered Montana via Canada. We've been hearing that it does not pose a serious risk, but it is traveling near sensitive sites. And people living in the Billings, Montana area definitely noticed something strange in the sky. Listen to this. There's the moon. Right. And then there's that. What planet is that? Okay, that's the moon. It's a little fuzzy out here, and it's a kind of a cruddy phone, but it's slightly overcast. Well, what the heck is that? That's not the sun, and according to my little planet guide, it's not a planet. What the heck is that? Any help would be appreciated. The military and White House say there are no plans to shoot down the balloon. It's traveling at a very high altitude, well above commercial air traffic, but the balloon is near a potential target for Chinese espionage, intercontinental ballistic missiles located in Montana. Meanwhile, the Biden administration says it acted immediately to prevent the balloon from collecting any sensitive information. CNN's Pentagon correspondent Orrin Lieberman picks up the story. Officials say it came into the U.S. over Montana, coming in from Canada, and that's where they began tracking it, at first launching F-22 fighter jets. In the end, the decision was made not to shoot it down. President Joe Biden was asked for military options, but senior military leaders, including Chairman of the Joint Chiefs General Mark Milley, advised against shooting this down. Instead, they are keeping an eye on it and seeing where it goes. The Pentagon does acknowledge this tra traveled over several sensitive sites, though they won't specify which sites those are. It is worth noting that Montana is home to ballistic missile silos, so perhaps that's what this was after. It is also worth noting, of course, that the Pentagon says they are confident, very confident, in fact, that this was launched by China, and they brought it up through diplomatic channels, both here in Washington and in Beijing, essentially to express how angry they are about this. Well, CNN Beijing Bureau Chief Stephen Zhang joins me now. And Stephen, we just got reaction from Beijing to this. What are they saying? Yeah, Kim, I just um, came back from the foreign ministry's daily briefing where I asked them three questions about this alleged Chinese uh, spy balloon. What's interesting is the spokeswoman did not deny the balloon belongs to China outright. Instead, she gave this uh, rather vague answer, as you can see on your screen. She said, we are aware of reports of the balloon and are trying to understand the circumstances and verify the details of the situation. I'd like to stress that before it becomes clear what happened, any deliberate speculation or hyping up would not, would not help the handling of the matter. She added, China is a responsible country. We act in accordance with international law, and we have no intention of violating other countries' airspace. We hope relevant parties would handle the matter in a cool-handed way. So this uh, rather muted response uh, seemed to give some credence to the analysis by some U.S. experts that the revelation of this uh, balloon uh, was deliberate on the part of some U.S. officials to really put the Chinese on the back foot ahead of the uh, blink visit to allow the secretary to really address this, this issue with them more directly uh, to confront them to uh, basically tell them what the U.S. knows and what the U.S. would like to see uh, Chinese do. But it's also interesting that when I and other reporters asked the foreign ministry spokeswoman about if this uh, revelation would have any impact on this planned high-stakes visit, she dodged the question simply saying she has no information or updates to announce. But the timing of this, of course, is what makes this very uh, delicate and also potentially highly consequential because it really complicates things at a time when both governments, at least publicly, are saying they're trying to reset or at least stabilize this increasingly contentious relationship. And remember, this kind of incident really, uh, in, a, in a way, playing to the hands of heartland.
hotliners on both sides. Already we are seeing uh, some members of uh, Congress in Washington calling for stronger actions and new briefings and you know, portraying this as a, yet another example of uh, how President Biden's China policy uh, is being too weak. And uh, similarly, on the Chinese sides, you could see this potentially uh, really uh, stir up more uh, nationalistic sentiment and feelings. And so, uh, you know, this obviously is not happening in a vacuum ahead of this visit. We are already seeing a flurry of, of activities on the U.S. part, uh, not only on the economic and technology front, but also in the military sphere in terms of shoring up its presence in this uh, region, including those uh, newly signed agreements with the Philippines. And even without this balloon revelation, uh, expectations are already very low about this visit in terms of concrete results out of the meetings between Blinken and uh, his Chinese counterpart, Kim. And with this revelation, um, I think it's just adding more uncertainty to this trip. For more on this, I want to bring in Malcolm Davis from Canberra, Australia. He's a senior analyst with the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. So uh, with this, uh, you know, spy balloon, uh, in some ways it seems comically low tech, but w what do you make of this balloon and its purpose and capabilities? Look, I think what it is, is a, certainly a political message being sent by China uh, to challenge the US in terms of the upcoming visit by uh, Secretary of State Blinken. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a provocative shot across the US bowels in that sense. From a military technical perspective, um, I think, as you say, it's a very low tech way of uh, undertaking intelligence gathering in comparison to, say, spy satellites. But in the way that they could use this balloon to gather signals intelligence and electronic intelligence over critical military sites, it's probably uh, uh, quite a, a provocative but challenge, but effective way of gathering intelligence. So, so you think it's more uh, to, to sort of listen in rather than to, to see things, I guess. Uh, the, the, the U.S. decision not to shoot it down, it surprised some people. Do you agree with the rationale? Just let it go? Yes, essentially, because if you look at the imagery of, of the balloon, uh, you'll note that there's uh, two large arrays of solar panels uh, below it. And then in, in the middle, there's a series of equipment um, uh, sections, uh, essentially in an instrumentation package. This would have a fair bit of mass given the size of the balloon. So that if they shot the balloon down, there's quite the possibility that that instrumentation package and the solar panels could actually cause damage or potentially even harm people on the surface below when it came crashing down. Okay, but it has to come down sometime. So uh, where could it land? And then what happens then? Does it, does it sort of, uh, will we see a James Bond-like race to get to it first? Well, my initial thought was Ice Station Zebra, if you remember that movie. But essentially, yes, it does have to come down at some point. And so the instrumentation package on that balloon would be of intelligence value uh, to the US. The US would obviously want to get a hold of that. The Chinese would want to stop them from getting that. So it really does depend on where it comes down. If it comes down over the ocean, perhaps in the Gulf of Mexico or on the Atlantic uh, Ocean, uh, then it is a challenge in terms of recovering it from the water. If it comes down over land, potentially over Central America or Mexico, that's an even more challenging scenario because then it's in someone else's territory. So it will be interesting to see how that ultimate end game works out. 